Crimea's main connection to the outside world, today in the hands of men with machine guns. They wore no insignia, but their military fatigues were a Russian design. Their weapons were Russian standard issue. We are now deeply concerned by reports of military movements taken by the Russian Federation inside of Ukraine. Fighting with new power, Russia's Black Sea Fleet is seen here in action against Nazi supply ships. Why does Russia invade so many countries? Can't it just be satisfied with this territory? The piece of land they have got is not particularly small. In fact, this country can host two USA's within itself, or five India's or 70 UK's. High up in the Ural Mountains, there is a cross mark indicating the boundaries of two continents, Europe and Asia. It is a beautiful spot where the skies are clear. You can see the unending rolling patches of fir trees to the east. Here, tourists like to keep one foot in Asia and another in Europe. It is a reminder of just how big Russia is. Why then does Russia keep on invading its neighbors? The cause lies deep within the very roots of its beginning. Back to how this massive bear was first founded. Let's rewind a few centuries back to the 9th century. Here, a group of East Slavic tribes called the Kievan Rus had settled around Kiev and a few towns along the river Nipe. Unfortunately, the gangs of the plains, Mongols, decided to attack them and the Kievan Rus had to flee to some place safe. They decided to come to the city of Moscow. However, there was a slight problem. The city wasn't exactly safe. With no mountains or deserts and a few rivers, this early Russia, known at that time with the fancy name of Grand Principality of Muscovy, was practically indefensible. If they had decided to twirl their necks a bit and see around, they would have noticed that all around them were flatlands. And across the steppes to the east and the southeast, there were the Mongol gangs. Unlike today's superpowers like the USA, who has two seas flanking it, with the little brother Canada to the north, who matches with it culturally and with much smaller size would like to have a continual alliance, and Mexico to the south, which although is culturally quite different, yet isn't that powerful or wealthy enough to stop an invasion, the country faces no danger. Unlike many other nations, Russia was kinda cursed by geography. The enemies could choose their place of invading and there was no natural barrier to stop them. But then entered this man who changed the face of Russian history. His name was Ivan the Terrible. He introduced the concept of attack as defense, beginning your expansion by consolidating at home and then moving outwards. He's kinda the guy from the squad where individuals alter the face of history. Without his utter ruthlessness and vision, Russia's fate would have been completely different. With him, Russia encroached east on the Urals, south to the Caspian Sea, and north towards the Arctic Circle. It gained access to the Caspian and later the Black Sea, thus taking advantage of the Caucasus Mountains as a partial barrier between it and the Mongols. A military base was built in Chechnya to deter any would-be attackers, be they the Mongol Golden Hordes, the Ottoman Empire or the Persians. There were setbacks, but over the next century, Russia would push past the Urals and edge into Siberia, eventually incorporating all the land to the Pacific coast far to the east. Now they had the Arctic Ocean to the north, the Urals to the east, and if someone decided to enter from the south or the southeast, they would have to face the Russian snow along with carrying huge supply lines of the massive army only after getting past the Russian defenses. Let's forward a little to the 18th century when under the reign of Peter the Great who founded the Russian Empire and then Empress Catherine the Great, 
the most stable and secure Russia decided to look westward. For the same reason, they had first started to look anywhere to acquire natural defenses and make their country safe. They conquered Ukraine, reached the Carpathian Mountains, and took over the Baltic states, namely Lithuania, Latvia, and Estonia. Now, Russia had a huge ring that protected it, well equipped with a few seas, an ocean, two mountain ranges, and defense positions stationed all around. The country of Russia was found on the very grounds of the conquests it had started. That was how it was built and that will be how it would last.